Greetings and welcome to another video of Voice Attack and You. In this episode, we're going to look at how to trigger a command by using your voice and other options. So let's crack on. Go into a profile and make a command. And we can see up here we've got four options. We've got when I say, when I press keys, when I press a button, and when I press a mouse. More often than not, you're going to be using the spoken phrases. The trigger command. After all, it is voice attack. You can use your voice. Let's put something in, shall we? There we go. Just to deploy your landing gear on your plane or your spaceship, we've got deploy gear, deploy landing gear, lower gear, and then lower landing gear, which works very nicely. However, as you build up your voice commands, you might have a number of phrases in there, which can then get quite big. There's a handy little thing in voice that called dynamic commands, which allows you to compress spoken phrases down into a more manageable format and also let you do number ranges. You open up Notepad, you can see those are the phrases we just put in. So, if you want to use them as dynamic commands, you need to do something slightly differently. So, to open up a command, you go do a square bracket and then you put in the first word, which in this case is deploy, and then you separate it with a semicolon. The space isn't necessarily need is the case, but I do it because it makes it look a little bit tidier. Then you close it with a square bracket. And then you can say either deploy or lower. And now the next word in the phrase is landing. Now we want landing to be optional. We don't want to always have to say landing. We just want to be able to say deploy gear or deploy landing gear. And we do another square bracket and we type in landing and we do a semicolon before the closing bracket indicates it's optional. The last one is gear, which doesn't need anything around it because it's just a single word, which is always going to be said. So now we've got the same, exactly the same phrases deploy, landing gear, deploy gear, lower, landing gear. It's exactly the same commands, just compressed into a smaller format. Then this lets you do some really cool things. And in the best Blue Peter fashion, here's some I prepared earlier. Change the colors so they stand out more easily. We've got the original phrase up there, all the original phrases, deploy, gear, lower, gear, etc. There's the compressed version. And in the next line, we've added another word in, the, which is optional because we have the semicolon before the closing square bracket. You can say deploy the landing gear, deploy landing gear, or just deploy gear. And if we want to extend it even more, we can go and add it legs to the end. And now you've got the option to say deploy gear or legs, as well as the and landing. And if we were to add another word in, we can add wheels in. And we've got a third option. And then we can add another one here, which is extend. But it's very easy to add words into the phrases you want to use. One thing to be aware of is when using dynamic commands, you can quite easily generate lots of permutations of spoken phrases. Here, I've expanded all the phrases out into one thing. So this is one line of text, in effect. If I copy that and go back into the command, you see, if we OK that, that is quite a long line. Goes off the edge, yeah, so you can't even see it all. And even if you go into the command, you can't see it all. When you've got lots of phrases like this, you really want to use the dynamic command. But just be aware, as I say, that it can rather easily generate lots of you know, possibilities. And voice act will give you a warning if you go over a certain limit. If we click that one there, so much easier. You can see it all. And it's easier to add more to it if you wanted to, or take away if you wanted to. Now, the other thing you can do with it is you can put a semicolon at the very end and a space, and then you can type in another completely different set of phrases. The other thing you can do is you can do number ranges. So you can have whatever you want your phrase to be. Let's say fire missile. That'll just fire. That'll just, you know, if I miss out. 
But if we put in a square bracket and then one dot dot ten, for example, and then close it, that lets you say by missile one, by missile two, by missile five, by missile ten, and so on. You can have something like call wingman and then open bracket and then one dot dot ten close bracket. You can say call wingman one, call wingman three, call wingman five, call wingman ten, and so on. You'd have to do some other bits and pieces in the actual command to work out which one you're using with the command segment token, but that's for another episode. But you can also do this as well. Say you wanted it between 1 and 100, for example, but you only want it to go up in increments of 10. Put a semicolon and then you do 10. Then you can say, call wingman 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. The other thing you can do is you can use a variable in the, when I say section, so we get rid of this, we do squirrely bracket because we're going to use a variable and it always has to be text. And then what if you want to call the name? So this would be, let's call this one as we did earlier. Where? Here. The brackets. So what you do is you take that variable name there. Okay, this. Another command. I call this voice triggers here we go advanced set x value variable name and then whatever we want it to be so we could have once we had earlier this that in there okay that okay that why now we need to execute this command to set the variables so now we can say Deploy gear, lower landing wheels, lower the wheels, and it all works. And if we ever want to change it, we just go back in, and rather than going into the actual command itself, just go into the variable, and we can change it in there. There's another way of doing it. You can also use wildcards, which is an asterisk around the phrase. So let's say you have a phrase, attack to indicate to voice attack that you want the command attack to be executed whenever you're speaking, you put an asterisk at the beginning and the end of the word. If, however, you want it to only execute if the spoken phrase starts with the word attack, you put the asterisk at the end of attack. And if you only want it to be executed when attack is at the end of a spoken phrase, you put the asterisk at the beginning of the word attack. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not something I would use because if you're speaking and the voice attack and the speech engine thinks it's heard a valid command, it will trigger it and that could mess things up for you. So here we have when I press keys. If you just put a key in this, let's do G. You can also add your modifiers like Control Alt Shift, you just click on it and it adds them in. Click it again and it turns them off. Click in there and it will get resets the key. Let's put that back. We've got do not allow keys to be passed through. Voice attack is passing the key press to the program or game rather than you doing it. So you normally want to leave that on. Then we've got some options here. Shortcut is invoked only when keys are released. Be self evident. Shortcut is invoked when pressed twice. So you have to like, double tap it. And the option here you can also invoke on a single key press, but you have to use a token to work out whether you've done a single key press or a double tap. Shortcut is invoked when long pressed. The default time is 700 milliseconds, which you can change in the voice attack main options. And again, you've got another option here to bypass that. But again, you need to use a token to differentiate between a normal key press or a long key press. This is another obvious one. We repeat while the keys are held down. And lastly, we have user variable. So we could have fire, missile. That'd be the variable name. You set the key press in the variable in another command, which saves you having to come back into every command that uses that key press. Press buttons. This is exactly the same as press a key, except it's a button on your HOTAS or your Xbox controller. You need to set it up in the options here. If you haven't done already. There I have my X56 stick, throttle, and gamepad controller. This is then sets the joystick or the controller up in voice attack.
same options as you have on press a key, no difference there whatsoever. Then you've got when I press mouse. So here you've got your mouse options. You have to click these in here. You can't press it on the mouse itself. You have to actually click it on this bit here. You've got the various options. And then these are pretty much the same as the press a key or press a button, but a couple of differences. We've got some other options on here. But to get these grayed out ones to work, you have to untick this. And now you can see the other options are available. And that's how to activate a command by using your voice, by pressing a key, by pressing a button, or by using the mouse. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe too and share the video out. Until the next one, take care and I'll see you soon. Toodles.